you, Lord, for gathering us wherever we may be, that we could unite our spirits in worship in loving you and giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise that's due to you. And so we lift up this time to you. We ask that you hear us, listen to our hearts as we worship you this day. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. It's the song of the redeemed rising from the African plain. It's the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain. The song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, a love song born of a grateful wife. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Oh, 
May the peace of Christ be with you. Go and greet your neighbors. Maybe not go, but turn and wave, air high fives. People online, share the joy and the love by clicking like, clicking heart, leave a comment. Let us know you're here. All right, it's time for ping. Ping, are you there? Hello. Hello. Hey, Snowy. Snowy, can you hear me? Who? It's me, Ping. Who? Ping the panda. Who? You know, panda. Black and white, fluffy, and absolutely handsome. Ooh. Ping, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Pastor Mark. Hey, kids. I'm inside the brain of my friend Snowy, Snowy the Owl. Ooh. Why are you in Snowy's brain? To understand what it means to love God with all your mind. I wanted to see if Snowy was loving Jesus with his mind. Ooh. You know, Jesus, son of God, savior of the world. Who? No wonder I can't find Jesus in here. Snowy doesn't know who Jesus is. Who? Exactly. If 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 he loved Jesus with all his mind, I would see Jesus all over his neurons. The Bible tells us to be transformed by renewing our minds. So I thought if I shrunk down and got into Snowy's brain, I'd be able to see Jesus. I don't think it works that way, Ping. It doesn't? No, what it means is that we need to change our way of thinking. Ooh. We do. Change the way we think about what? Everything. We should try to think about things the way that Christ would think about things. And that's how our minds are renewed? Yes. We need to ask God to help us understand life the way that God sees it and change our way our, of thinking. And it changes the way we act and behave towards others. Ooh. Not who. You. Well, Ping, I'll let you continue picking Snowy's brain. We'll see you next week. You know it. At the next secret location. Bye, kids. Who? The kids. Don't you see them through the screen? Who? Them. Over there. Never mind. See ya, kids. Bye. See ya, Ping. We are called to renew our minds, and that does not mean reaching in and poking things around. That's dangerous. But asking God to, to uh, help us to think about things a little bit differently. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for our minds, the way that we can think, that we are creative, and we can imagine many things. Help us to use our minds to love you and to love one another. We pray this in Christ's name. And all God's children said, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. What a crazy week in American politics, isn't, wasn't it? Um, but it was a good week for educational purposes. We were watching the, the results come in with the kids, and it was really good to talk about, you know, um, the Electoral College and why cer certain states haven't been called yet. Um, one of the highlights of the week was when one of the kids asked, well, what happens if there was a tie in the Electoral College? Because there was a point where uh, both Trump and Biden could have gotten uh, 269. 
And so they went, they looked on the internet and one of them starts reading. If there be a tie or something like that, and then they stop and say, wow, our forefathers talk like pirates. You know, great. <laughs> we taught our kids well. Anyways, it was, um, <sighs> yeah, it's, it's a good, um, good week to be together. And, um, you know, putting the politics aside, it's just really um, wonderful that there is a woman in the in the White House, a woman of color, and as a Asian American, as a minority, it's refreshing to see that there is something more than a a white aging male in the White House. That that there is diversity, and it, it better reflects who we are and who we are becoming as a country. Um, thing I would say is, you know, when. Trump took office, there was a bunch of people calling for prayer for Trump and calling for people to support him. And I know there's a lot of litigation or whatever going on, but you know, when um, Biden takes office, I'd like to see the same people calling for Trump's support to be supporting Biden as well, because as the president goes, so does the country. And so we need to be keeping our leaders in prayer. So we'll be praying for uh, transitions and things like that to happen, and hopefully he uh, Biden can um, fulfill his promise of unifying the country, or at least attempt to unify the country, because we really need that as the country. Several things coming up next week is coffee for a cause. You know, it's good to have this event. It would be really nice to do something normal for a change and a coffee for a cause it was going to be next week starting on starting at 10 a.m we're going to 1 p.m at ironworks and so you could go there um, there'd be spaces inside to sit but there's also going to be drive up so you could drive in order your coffee and have um, your cinnamon roll in car so uh, the, the youth will be there serving the money will uh, help purchase uh, shoes through soul to soul and uh, last year we distributed or last spring we distributed fifteen hundred dollars to the elementary school and the middle school for uh, the counselors to buy shoes for those in needs and I, I i'm hoping that we can build on that this year on thursday uh, this thursday swag will be meeting for their uh, night of worship and sharing and so that would be at 7 p.m here at 12 uh, on the 12th and then it's that season where we're looking for nominations for elders and deacons for the class of 2023 if you know of someone who would serve well or if you yourself would like to serve uh, please contact either myself or uh, sharon mobley sharon is the chair of that nominating committee so please uh, let us know are there any uh, joys or concerns from the congregation? Elaine. Happy birthday, Jody, if you're watching online. So if you uh, have the chance, say happy birthday to her. Anything else? Well, let us pray. God, you are gracious to us, that you look after us, and that you protect us. You walk with us through our joys, and you walk with us through our sorrows. We thank you that you are intimately involved in our lives, and that you speak to us, and you show us things even when we do not acknowledge it, Lord, you are there. And so we thank you uh, for being a God who cares about us. You are a God who cares about the, the things that weigh us down. And you rejoice with us, Lord, when things lift us up. There are many things that are upon our hearts as we come before you. many concerns about our loved ones, 
people we haven't been able to see, people that we haven't been able to reach out to. And so we ask that you would be with those people, that you would extend your love and your grace to them this day, that they may feel your presence. There are people who need healing, and we lift those people up to you. And there are people who need encouragement, people who have fears and concerns. I pray for your peace to fill them and to encourage them along the way. We give you thanks for Jody and her birthday today. We pray that you would continue to walk with her and continue to bless her, continue, Lord, to um, show her the direction, the directions you'd li like her to live her life and to continue to honor and glorify you in all that she does. So bless her this year. We thank you. And we also uh, pray for our country. Uh, in the aftermath of this election, there's a lot of things that... Um, are left in the unknown. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to be at our country and that you would, uh, that you would uh, bless the president-elect and that you would help him, Lord, to uh, lead the country well. We thank you, Lord, for uh, always, always being our God through the good times and through the bads. Help us to have faith in you. Help us to trust in your sovereignty, knowing that you love us and you indeed care for us. And so we pray these prayers in the name of Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Son.
Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's continue to worship. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. We bless you, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i worship your holy name bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never Worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end. Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son 
the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing that again. How great is our God? How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, and name above all names, he's worthy. Sing that one more time, name above all names. Name above all names. He's worthy of all praise. This is our choice right here. My heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing it together. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Please be seated, everyone. Today's scripture readings come from Romans 12, verses 1 to 2, and Colossians 3, verses 1 through 11. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12, 1-2 Colossians 3, 1-11 so, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. Colossians 3, 
1 through 11. Let us pray. God, as we turn our minds towards you, I pray that as we hear your words, that you would renew our minds, that you help us to turn our thoughts, not on earthly things, but on heavenly things, things that are eternal, things that um, make a difference, things that glorify you. And so help us, Lord, to hear your word to us today. Help us to come away from, from uh, the sermon, being challenged and transformed, and help us, Lord, to become more like you. We pray, Lord, in, in Jesus' name, amen. So there is this show on the National Geographic's channel. It's called uh, Brain Games. Anyone watch Brain Games? Probably not. It's a game that uses brain teasers and little tests or tricks on the viewers to show you the ways that the mind can affect the way we perceive and understand the world around us. And so oftentimes they would have an illusionist come in and show us a trick, and show us how he pulls the trick off to illustrate just how our attention is easily drawn away from, from what's going on so that he can pull those tricks off. They might show you a picture and tell you to remember as many things about that picture as you can, and then try to uh, help you recall those things to show you how your memory works. Or they might ask us to look at a video and tell us, Tell them what uh, you feel or what you, might, what you think might happen to illustrate just how our feelings and our background help us to inform us about the situation that we've seen. What the show does is effectively illustrate that our minds are doing a lot more than we realize about how we perceive the world around us and that it actually is a powerful tool to help us to navigate the world around us. Our minds have taken us from surviving as hunter-gatherers in the wilderness to living in this high-tech world that we live in today. We have gone from hiding in caves to blasting off into space, exploring outside of our world. Our mind is incredib incredibly powerful, full of imagination, ingenuity, and creativity to take human beings in unimaginable adventures. The slogan for the United Negro College Fund is, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And given how powerful the mind is, that saying is true, not only for African Americans who want the opportunity to further their education, but really for all of us, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I tell my kids from time to time, God has given you a wonderful brain and he intends for you to use it to its fullest capacity. And I think that is how we love the Lord our God with all, all of our minds, to use it, to unlock the power of the mind and use it. And when I say unlock the power of the mind, I don't mean in some new agey, self-help, mystical sort of way. I simply mean to use your mind and put it to work. They say your brain is like a muscle, and it's true. You need to use it to get it stronger. When someone has a stroke, they go into physical therapy, not only to get the muscles strong again, but also to uh, repair those neural attachments from the brain to the limbs or wherever, so that the, the neural pathways can be strengthened and connections could be strengthened so that the brain can talk to the rest of the body. Every time you have a thought, have an experience, commit things to memory, basically use your brain, you're making new synapses, connections in the brain. 
And when you continue to use your brain, you're reinforcing those pathways, making new synapses, making your brain stronger. It was thought that brains were more plastic or malleable in younger minds, that when you are young, it's easier to learn things quickly, and that as you age, your brain becomes more rigid and set. The research suggests that the, the adult brain isn't as set as people once thought, that there even in the, that in, in the adult brain there are even neurons that are being made and that those new synapses are being formed. How the adult learns depends on the environment, their attitudes, and the manner in which things are learned. So no longer can you say that you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Unfortunately, at some point in time, a lot of us stop exercising our brains. Perhaps once we get out of school and settle into our careers, and we are not necessarily challenged mental, mentally as we once were. We get out of the practice of using our brains. After a hard day at work, we don't want to add any more mental strain, and so we are likely to watch a movie or watch TV and let the words and images just bathe our brain instead of critically thinking about it. We let others do the thinking for us instead of critically think about the things we read or see on the news. If that's true about our daily lives, what does it say about our spiritual lives? Increasingly, we have become reliant upon people who have done the work for us, whether it's preachers or televangelists, authors, podcasts, or YouTube stars, or whatever. They use words that are appealing, make things into sound bites so they're easily to to digest, clean teachings up so it doesn't sound too threatening to our lives. But do they really challenge us to think, to stretch our minds, to go back to the Bible and do the research for ourselves? Some people believe that in order to become a Christian, you have to check your brain in at the door, to believe that God sent his son to live among us, and that he died and then he rose again, that we have to somehow throw out our intellect we believe in this false dichotomy that science and faith do not mix. On the contrary, there are a lot of scientists out there who observe the world around them and come to the conclusion that the world they are observing is not possible without a creator. When I worked in a lab and studied fruit flies, I saw under the microscope the complex anatomy of a fly or when I looked at cells neatly arrayed, and they moved in orchestra orchestrated movements to make intricate structures, or even looked at the DNA sequence and the instructions on how flies are formed, and all the complex biochemistry that goes into making proteins and organs and all that. I didn't think, geez, it's lucky that we had a bunch of molecules bouncing together randomly that finally formed RNA and eventually formed single-cell life that got us to where we are today. It screamed to me a creator with such creativity, ingenuity, and foresight to make animals and humans in such a way that helps us adapt and change to a changing earth. Wow, that blows my mind to think of all the thought and all the creativity and all the, the things that went into making each and every one of us, each and every animal, that just blows my mind. We don't have to check our brain in at the door. Instead, we use our brains that God gave us to think about the world first through whatever lens we have, but ultimately we need to look through look at the world through the lens of faith, through Jesus Christ. Paul says in today's scripture from Romans, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Paul tells us to no longer be conformed to the world, but, be, but to be transformed 
Note here that the verbs are passive. Be conformed. Be transformed. Passive verbs are verbs where the action is being done to the subject. Something else is conforming you. Something else is transforming you. When it is passive, that means you, the main subject, isn't doing anything. You're letting it happen to you. The conforming to the world is being done to you. The world and all of its values and messages are making their impression on you, shaping you, molding you, conforming you to the pattern or to the ways of this world. Paul says, don't let that happen to you. Make it stop. Instead, be transformed. Again, a, a passive verb. Who is the actor of doing this transformation? Jesus Christ. He says, allow Christ to do the work of transforming you, and then your mind will be renewed. This work of renewal is what Paul is talking about in Colossians. He says, if you have been raised with Christ, if you have faith in Christ and in, in, and in his death and resurrection, your old self has died. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever in you, earthly, or what does that say? Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Put to death the earthly things, he says, the things that you were conformed to in this world all those sins that he, he lists. He says, put those things off. Put those things to, de to death. And he continues to say, these are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. When you were living that life, conformed to this world, those were the things you were living like. But then, he says, get rid of such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. You used to live this way, but now through Christ, your old self has been put to death, and now you have new life, a life free of things such as anger, wrath, malice, slander, etc. Your whole life has been transformed. He goes on to say, you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with new life, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. You're being renewed according to the world? No, according to the image of God. You are being renewed in his image. In that renewal, Paul continues, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Our world separates us. Nationality, creed, identity, status, social economics, you name it. But in Christ, we are renewed and made free from, the con from being conformed to the standards of this world. The world dictates who has power, authority, privilege, status. And the world sets people against one another. People are filled with anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language. And there are some of those who use those things against others to make them feel superior. But in Christ, all that is stripped away. And we are transformed. Transformed in who we are, in our way of thinking, and behaving towards one another. Those renewed in Christ put those things to death and put on Christ. When we are transformed, when we are redeemed, we are able to discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Because our minds are renewed, our way of thinking is no longer conformed to this world. And because of that, we can discern the will of God in our lives. Our minds are no longer clouded. We can see and think more clearly about what God is doing in our lives. Like I said in the beginning, our, 
brains, our minds are powerful in the way it shapes the way we perceive and react to things in life. Our experiences and memories shape our lives. Perhaps a lesson that a parent or a grandparent taught us still rings true in your life. A positive influence having a positive impact on your life. On the flip side, we have bad experiences as well. And those things make us shy away from, from those other things. Maybe we had a bad experience at church and that makes us perceive others, Christians, um, even God, in a negative light. Perhaps we've gotten into a, a way of thinking negative about the life we live in now. There's so much stuff going on in the world right now. It's easy to develop a negative outlook on life. And so there are many ways in which we get these negative feelings and negative thoughts, and they impact the way we react in life. And you know what? God can redeem and transform those things as well. Our memories, our failures, our hurts, the pain and suffering, all those things that go into our minds, God can redeem and transform in the light of Christ. I'm not saying that he takes those memories from us. For some people, the painful times are held tightly to remember what they went through or the people they represent. I'm also not saying that he takes away difficulties and sorrows. All those things shape us to who we are and make us stronger. What I am saying is that We have been renewed through Christ's death and resurrection. The way we see things are ultimately through the lens of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. We are transformed and renewed in Christ. And because of that transformation, we could look at our past memories. We could look at our current situation. We could even look forward in our hopes and our dreams all through the lens of Christ and understand What is the will of God? What is good and acceptable and perfect? To love the Lord your God, then, is to use your mind, put it to work, to stop being conformed to the ways of thinking in this world, but be willing to be transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ and allow that transformation to renew our understanding about who we are in the past, who we are presently, and what our dreams are in the future. Through the lens of Christ, we can love the Lord your God with all our minds as we think about all these things going on in the world and discern what is God doing. And we could turn and praise God because we see that indeed God is working things ultimately, ultimately, towards the end when Christ returns and we could all celebrate together. Please pray with me. God, we thank you for our minds, for the power that it has to create, to imagine, to remember, to love. I pray that you would be doing the work of renewing our minds, that we may be able to think about life in the light of Jesus Christ, that you would transform us and transform our way of thinking about uh, one another and about you. Make us new people. Give us energy, imagination, and love to love one another, but also to go out and to love the world. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. This is what I long for, holiness, what I need, holiness, holiness is what you want from me.
Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind. Transform it, take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Take my heart, so take my heart and form it, take my mind, transform it, take my will, conform it. Please rise for the benediction. Go out and live that new life we have in Jesus Christ. Be renewed in your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and use those things to love the Lord your God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Holiness, holiness, what I long for. Holiness, what I need. Yes. Yeah.